So Davy dies in 1992. Yeah, 91, 92. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was 92. 92. 92, Yep. And you have to transition out of your relationship with, with Davy from the souvenir side of things. We did. So how, I mean, how do you wind up with Earnhardt? Well, you know, we all hunted during that period, you know, Davy, Richard and Dale and myself, and we kept all those relationships going. And, you know, we had a television show on the Nashville network, TNN called Realtree Outdoors. And, uh, so, uh, you know, Dale and Richard both were a constant, you know, guest on those shows with me. And, uh, but we enjoyed just being around each other. So it was really, it was a real easy thing. And, uh, you know, it even up, uh, all the way through the nineties, uh, I can't tell you how many times Dale was on Realtree Outdoors and was Richard and, uh, and that those relationships were just there as a friendship, just very similar to where you and I have and Tyler have right now. So it was easy. How, yeah. how did, how did the sponsorship start on the car with Dale? Well, you, you know, the, um, we've been hunting and fishing together for about 10 years and then, and probably about 94, 95, I, I actually told Richard, I said, look, you know, our business was new at the time. I didn't have a whole lot of money to be able to put big sponsorship on cars. And so we, uh, we did a deal with, with Dale and Dale said, let's, let's get the B post and the C post and let's get it started. And, uh, and that's what we did. And, mm-hmm. you know, the relationship with both of them, with Richard and Dale, was very good for our business, you know, back in the time, you know, being in the camouflage business. And so uh, it just went from there. And and obviously Dale's went in races and, uh, you know, back in the day with RCR. And uh, so it just, it was a good thing for us. Do you remember the first time you met Dale? Or what was the first memory you had with <laughs> so, Dale or being around him? <laughs> Dad, Dad's probably going to remember this, but, uh, you know, a, a memory that I still have to this day, I was probably... I don't know, maybe six or seven years old. And uh, Dale actually took me in the garage and we were gone for like two hours. And like, he was, I think, worried sick. This was before cell phones. I didn't have a phone or anything. Dale didn't have a phone with him. And we went around, talked to different crew members. I'm sure I met some different well, drivers. Well, first, now, <laughs> for, first, he wasn't supposed to be there's in the garage. There's more to yeah. the story. There's more in the story. First, he's not really supposed to be in the garage. Right? Yeah. Of course, obviously, yeah. you know, with Richard and Dale and everything. And, and I'll never forget, Dale walked up to me and said, Tell your daddy we'll be back in a little while. And all I can remember, you know, six Gone. years old and 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 uh, Dale walking off. Well, two hours go by and I have I have no clue where my baby boy is, but he's with Dale. Yeah. So he, So we were and like at the time, obviously, like I had no idea how big of a deal that was. Like even when he came to the farm and turkey hunted, I was like, Man, this is just one of dad's hunting buddies. Yeah. Right. I mean, then, you know, now looking back on it, I, you know, I realize how special those times were, but, um, I do remember, you know, being gone for a long period of time. And then, uh, you know, having him and Richard at the farm in those early years were, uh, you know, special memories. Yeah. But you were gone, but what were you doing? We were just in the garage. I don't even know what we were doing. I think we were maybe by, you were just roaming. He got a six or seven year old now. Yeah. Roaming roaming around. I I just followed him around and he held my hand through the garage and we met, I don't know, different team members, a part of maybe some of his team members. I'm not even really sure. Yeah. But we were gone for at least an hour and a half. I got, I got two funny stories. So the first time I met Dale, I was uh, with Hornaday and we had decided that we weren't very good at golf and we were going to go and we were going to get some shotguns. So oh, this no. is probably, probably 98. So Hornaday was, Ron Hornaday yeah. uh, was driving for, for Dale and, and he went from the truck. He was probably still in the truck, probably in 98. So we go in there and we walk straight upstairs. We bust through Earnhardt's office door and he's sitting at his desk and he's got his glasses down about like this and he looks over his glasses. <laughs> What the hell do you two want? <laughs> <laughs> he's, got a, he's got piles of papers sitting on his desk, and uh, we sit down, and, and Hornaday says, well, boss, he's like, we want to go learn how to shoot a shotgun. He said, what in the hell do you want to go learn how to shoot a shotgun for? You two idiots will shoot your toes off or something happens. Shouldn't you be outside in the shop working on your race cars? And so we go through that that whole spill, and finally, you remember Danny from mm-hmm. – uh, Remington. Mm-hmm. So he calls. I do. I do. He calls Danny from from Remington. He's like, "Can you come get these two morons and teach them how to shoot these guns correctly, so that they don't injure themselves and can still drive this race car?" And he starts. He gets up and takes his glasses and throws them on the desk. And and he tells Hornaday, he says, "Go outside and get the truck." Kevin, you come with me. And we start walking down the stairs. And then he starts explaining everything that that he had going on at DEI. And we go back behind the shop and we go into this room and it's got knives and guns and yeah, everything gear head shop yeah 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 yep. right behind DEI. that's exactly yep. right yep. that's exactly right so we go into that room and we get that's where i got my first gun so that was where 
I got my first shotgun was was from exactly. Dale, and he gave myself and Hornaday a Remington shotgun, and to this day I, I still have it. But that oh, was cool. that was kind of where the outdoor piece of it start, and and then so we went a couple years, and um, we go to to Michigan to announce the the AC Delco deal, and I'm same kind of deal walking around with Richard. He's he's showing me around. I'm you know 23 years old, and and just everything everything there is is great, and we're um, going over to the trailer, we do our announcement. We walk over to the trailer. He's like, come on, let's go, let's go see what, let's go see what Dale's doing. So we walk up in the three trailer and walk up in the lounge because we're like 15, 20 minutes before practice. And we walk in and it was absolutely nothing that I never thought I would see in my whole life. But I walk in and there stands Dale Earnhardt. You know, you're thinking this guy in this big GM Goodrich suit, he's got, he's got his underwear on and two, and, and two gloves on his hand. And he's like, Hey Richard, how you doing, Kevin? And he walks over, shakes my hand in his gloves, standing in his standing in his briefs, and, and I'm like, "Well, um, what, what's what's happening in here?" He's like, "Well, I got to wear these new gloves, and so I don't like them if I don't wear them for a while." So he's just standing up there in his in his race gloves and his underwear. Oh yeah, um, just, walking around just in between, I guess, getting yeah. in his driver's suit. Yeah. So that was. Uh, that was my my first two uh, really lasting memories right lasting there. Lasting memories of, of Dale Earnhardt. So yeah. it was it was always always entertaining. So um, as you go back and and we go back to the you know to the the relationship with Dale and and you talk about those those early days, there has to be uh, to me Dale was always pretty. Is this fair to say he was pretty high strung and <laughs> and always in a hurry? Is that fair? That is fair. And you you know people that have known Dale and you've yeah. been around him as well. Uh, uh, Dale was uh, was always quick to give you advice. Yeah, you know if you you know even friends and you you've heard stuff. I know with Dale Junior and stuff, but he was quick to give you advice and about something whether he was right or wrong. He was always right, and I say that in a complimentary way, yeah. not a bad way. But uh, but he he was always thinking about something all the time. You're was he right. was he an anxious hunter? Or was he not, a pretty not pretty as much calm. as Childress? No, no, Childress. He, had, he had a heap more patience. <laughs> the most anxious hunter I've ever seen in my life was Richard Childress. Yeah, but uh, Dale was somewhat patient, and and you know he uh, he he wanted to get the big one, and he he loved competition. He didn't want you to outdo him, so he was very competitive, even in the woods and fishing or whatever he was doing. But uh, he he was a little he was a little anxious. Yep. Did he like to get past on dirt road in the snow? <laughs> <laughs> Several, <laughs> well, they were rental cars. So <laughs> that's how they were not my cars, but they were rental. But we did, we had a little bump or two, you know, in the rear end. And were you in his car? Where no, were you? No, uh, well, the story you're probably trying to. Uh, Iowa. We, we were in Iowa, yeah, okay. and we were Iowa. We were hunting with good friends Don and Candy Kiske at the Kiske place, and it was Dale and I and, and Ned Yost at uh, Ned's. A, former third base coach of Atlanta Braves and uh, also for the Kansas City Royals. They won the World Series. And Ned was a good friend of Dale's and Ned, and Ned was a good friend of ours. And But we were in Iowa and, uh, but Dale loved the competition side, which we all know, whether it was on the track or off the track. But uh, he gave us a little bump from the rear on the county road. And and David Blanton, you know, you, I know you know David that oh, works yeah. for us. David uh, was driving and we were behind on a county road. It is cold. It could be snow's coming down, and we're going from one place on the farm where we were staying <clears throat> to where Don and Candy were, and we were going to sight in shotguns for for a, you know slug gun season. And so we're following Dale on this county road. It's probably about 14, 15 degrees, and uh, David looks at me and says, "I'm gonna pass Dale." I said, "No, no, 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 no. We don't need to be passing." You were in the Dale. car with David. Yeah, I was in the car with David. So Ned and Dale are together. And so David gets a running start on that county road. It's got snow drifts on both sides. And I said, no, you, it's going to be payback if you, if you pass him. And so yeah. David just floored it. <laughs> and so we, <clears throat> we pull out. Dale not, does not see it coming. And I'll never forget, we get side by side on the county road. And I'll never forget, Dale was driving. And he looked and saw what's passing him. And you could see it through his face. His foot went, you, could, you know, he went fast. And we pulled around him. I said, he's going to spin us out. I'm just telling you right now, he, he's going to spin us out. So we're on this county road. Thank goodness no other cars were on there. And sure enough, he gets up there and gives us a little tap, you know, on the back. Yeah. And I said, we got to go up here and make his turn, David. He's going to spin us out right here on this road. So he backed, Dale backed off a little bit. So we go down this road. And I said, 
we got to stop. There's this barn where we're going to sight in the guns, and I know it's coming. And so we get to the barn, and so sure enough, you Ooh. know, two rental cars, boom, boom. And I just sit there. We, we're all stopped, and he uh, gets out, and the only comment he says is, y'all don't pass me again. <laughs> That's all he said. He said, y'all don't pass me again. And I, I, and I went back and looked at the back end of our truck, the front end of his, and we had a little dent. And so we had to do turn it in on our insurance, <clears throat> you know, get it fixed before we, you know, when you we turned across. You didn't ignorance on that one. You just, no, it just you knew you were in trouble. I was in trouble. No, he, he, you knew it was going to happen. Yeah. And, and Dale played that way. Yeah. I mean, you know, he, he, uh, he was, uh, he liked competition. Didn't like anybody getting one up on him. But uh, we did uh, return two rentals with dents in them. Did you ever hunt with him, Tyler? I don't think so. I don't think I ever did. I mean, I think I was always in, like when he came to Circle yep. Inn in Alabama, you know, we had a lease over there. And I remember, you know, Dave and Richard and Dale came and hunted, but I was always at camp. I don't think yep. I was ever in the woods. I think, I think, I think Dale was probably worried I would have slowed everything, everything yeah. down. Hey, race fans, thanks for watching our video. For all NASCAR on Fox News content and the best clips from Fox Sports, be sure to follow and subscribe to our channel.